So Newton's universal law of gravitation. Um, I guess giving some context, we talked about all of these astronomers who came before Isaac Newton, um, Copernicus with the uh, heliocentric model down through Tycho Brahe and Kepler who provided data and um, mathematical models for orbits. And then of course, Galileo who helped to provide experimental evidence confirming the heliocentric model. And Isaac Newton um, was born actually the same year that Galileo died and um, is a bit of a strange figure, but a very uh, famous physicist who published something called uh, the Philosophy Naturalis Principia Mathematica. Um, most people call it the Principia. Um, it was published in 1687 and it lays out the theory of calculus. Well, the method of calculus, which Newton invented in order to do physics. Um, so the Principia is a really important volume. I got to see it in person once when I was in Cambridge, UK. That was pretty sweet. Nerd moment. And of course, it's Newton who said, if I've seen further, it's by standing on the shoulders of giants, referring to all the astronomers who came before him, who laid the way for his development of physics. Okay, so anyway, what is the universal law of gravity? Well, gravity is any, um, it's an attractive force between objects with mass, and it occurs simply because objects have mass. So let's say that we have two asteroids. Um, the two of them will feel a mutual attraction to each other because they have mass. And uh, they feel the same size force pulling them together. I indicate that by having the arrows indicating the force that are the same size as each other. So they're equal and opposite in direction. And when a force is applied to objects that are not constrained some other way, then they move. So the force that pulls them together actually does pull them together as long as they are actually free to move. So this idea that force causes motion is really important and um, governs everything from how, you know, a baseball flies through the air to how um, a ballerina does a leap to how asteroids come together in space. All right. So the equation for Newton's law of gravity is this. Um, the force of gravity is equal to this constant G, the universal gravitational constant, times the mass of each object multiplied together, divided by the distance between them squared. So we can um, think about the universal constant G. Um, it has this value. I wouldn't worry about that too much, except to say that you can look this up on Google quite easily. Um, you always want to make sure you have the correct units. It has units of Newton meter squared per kilogram squared, which seems kind of bizarre, but it only has these units so that this whole equation comes out with the units of force in Newtons. Um, if that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. The main point is that the gravitational constant is just this fundamental constant that's baked into the universe. It is the way it is, and it governs how much force exists between different objects with their mass. Um, so let's see, if I have two masses, let's say one of them is the sun and one of them is the earth, then this gravitational force equation governs the force between them when they are separated by a distance r. So that's all that this equation is saying is that the force between those two objects is dependent on the values of each of their mass plus the distance between them. All right, so it's not just objects that are in orbit around other objects that this applies to, it's everything, every two objects with mass, me and the earth, me and my cat Iko, um, all two objects have a gravitational force between them. It's just that um, when there are very large masses are involved, such as the mass of the sun, then it has very uh, measurable consequences. Okay, so let's check on this. Um, thinking about the direction of gravitational forces, if I have this astronaut um, and they are right between two equal mass asteroids, uh, which direction would they feel gravity pulling them? And I'm seeing by and far the most votes for option number three, the asteroid isn't pulled, or the astronaut is not pulled toward either asteroid because the force from this asteroid is the same as this one if they have the same mass and they're the same distance from the astronaut. Exactly. All right, let's look at a slightly different situation. Um, my graphics are all messed up here. I'm not sure why. 
So let's say that the left pair of asteroids, they have equal mass m and they're separated by a distance r. And on the pair on the right, let's say that they have different masses. This one has m, this one has 2m, and they're separated by 2r. So which of these asteroid pairs would feel the larger gravitational force? Aha, more people are answering correctly this time. It works. Okay, I'm seeing a majority of votes for one. And that is correct. So the left pair feels a larger gravitational force. And to explain why, I wanna first talk about the idea of proportionality, which we kind of mentioned last week, but we didn't dig into too deeply. So proportional two is this kind of fish looking symbol. And proportionality just means that even though one uh, quantity might not be equal to another quantity, they change in the same way. So that means if I have some equation like distance equals speed times time, instead of having an, a direct equal in this equation, I could instead say, well, distance is proportional to time. And the reason I know distance is proportional to time is let's say I'm in a car driving down the highway and I drive at the same speed for twice the amount of time. If my travel time doubles, my distance travel doubles too. So distance is proportional to time because if the time doubles, the distance doubles. The same thing is true for distance and speed, by the way. So you can have proportionality um, of one uh, variable to multiple other variables. They're not always directly proportional like this though, right? When we look at our gravity equation, um, some of the values that the force of gravity depends on are actually in the denominator of the equation. So in order to understand proportionality, I think it's helpful to write down the equation and then just kind of spotlight one single variable at a time. So that's what we're gonna do here. If we look at our force of gravity equation, GMM over R squared, we could throw away everything except M1 and say, okay, that's in the numerator, meaning that the force of gravity is proportional to M1. We could say the same thing for M2, right? Or we could focus only on the distance between objects. And in this case, we would say the force of gravity is inversely proportional, meaning that it's proportional to one over instead of directly to the variable. We would say it's inversely proportional to R squared or inversely proportional to the square of the distance between objects. Any of those phrasings would be correct mathematically. And the reason that proportionality is helpful is because then it gives us kind of a quick rule of thumb for saying, if the mass doubles, then the force doubles. If the distance between objects doubles, something else happens. And that's what I want to get at with this question. So let's practice a couple of these proportionality ideas. So consider, first of all, this one. Um, the left pair, both objects have 2m mass and they're separated by r. And then the right pair, we've got a 3m asteroid and a 4m asteroid also separated by r. So compared to the pair on the left, I'm telling you the pair on the right has a bigger force between them. How much bigger is it? Using that idea of proportionality. All right. I'm seeing a vast, vast majority of votes for number two, which is correct. Um, is somebody willing to share how you arrived at this conclusion? So here, if we're multiplying the four by three, we get 12 divided by two by two, which is four. 12 divided by four is three. So that is a good explanation of the proportionality on this product of the masses. Awesome. So I'm gonna give you one more here um, related to the distance. So now let's assume that we have um, a solar system that has two planets, Arrakis and Miranda, and one sun. In Dune, this would be two suns, but forgive me. Um, let's say that Arrakis and Miranda have the same mass. Um, we know that Miranda is going to feel a weaker force, right, uh, than Arrakis because it's farther away. How much weaker do you think that would be? Nice. So I am seeing most votes for option number four, um, that Miranda would feel a force one ninth as strong. So coming back to our original example that set this whole proportionality discussion into motion, um, the same pairs of asteroids I showed you before, um, we have established that the right pair feels a weaker, a weaker force, but how much weaker? So if we're thinking about this proportionally, um, let's say that this left pair has a force of one 
Newton or something, right? It has m times m over r. And now the right pair in comparison, we're going to multiply the mass factor by two because one asteroid has m equals one, but the other one has m equals two. And so we're going to have a factor of two that comes from this second mass. And then in the denominator, our distance is larger by a factor of two, which means that there would be a factor of two squared or a factor of four in our denominator. So we have two divided by four, which would give us one half. So our, um, the fraction of the force that the right pair feels would be half as large. It seems like maybe it, that the factor of two in the mass and the factor of two in the distance would cancel each other out exactly, but that's not the case, right? Because the two is squared. 